My name is Dennis Byrne, and I'm a field service engineer with United Conveyor Corporation. Today, we're going to demonstrate how to install a new velour expansion joint. But before we get started, I'd like to point out that this is an instructional video only, and it's only intended to be used as a training aid. This video is not intended as a replacement for instructions found on UCC forms number 91140 and 720716. Proper installation of a new velour expansion joint connection is important in any installation to prevent leakage through the coupling and to ensure proper pipe alignment. Improper installation of a new velour expansion joint connection can cause air leakage through the joint, leading to conveying capacity problems and accelerated wear of components. These problems can cause unforeseen downtime, increased maintenance costs, and negatively affect the overall system performance. Okay, before we get started, we're going to make sure that we have all the correct tools. What we're going to need is hand wrenches, a nice sturdy hammer, you're going to need a ratchet and the proper size sockets, you're also going to need a good torque wrench and a torque multiplier. Don't forget you're going to need a tape measure because there's some critical measurements we have to take. When you get your new velour expansion kit, it's going to have the inventory instructions with it. On this form, it's going to show you all your pieces and parts. It's going to tell you the proper size and the proper quantity of all the parts that are included in the kit. Today we're going to be installing an 8-inch kit for an 8-inch pipe, so I refer to this line down here and make sure I have all my pieces. First piece I want to show you, this is the new velour expansion body. It's unique because it has a nice machined edge to it. You're also going to receive two locking flange clamps. You're going to receive one flange clamp. You're going to receive two rope gaskets. You're also going to receive an aligning ring. The aligning ring goes between the new below expansion kit body and your new white pipe. Provides, that's how set the proper gap. Something I want to point out. Before we can install the new Veloy expansion, we have to install a new Veloy to new Veloy kit. That's going to connect the new Veloy expansion kit body to the new Veloy pipe. That's going to come with an aligning ring also. Now notice the difference here is the new Veloy to new Veloy kit, the, al the aligning ring has three pins in it. The new Veloy expansion kit does not have three pins in it. Make sure during your installation that you use the proper aligning ring on the proper kit. The Nouveloy to Nouveloy kit can be seen in another instructional video. It is also important to follow all your safety policies instituted by your plant. Remember to always use appropriate safety equipment such as hard hats, steel toe boots, and eye protection. Gloves may not be required but are a good idea to protect your hands. Okay. Let's get started. First, we will shut down and lock up the system we're going to be working on. While you're gone, we went ahead and we installed our Nouveloy expansion joint body to our Nouveloy pipe using our Nouveloy to Nouveloy connection kit. Now, what I need to point out to you is that from the end of the expansion body to your Nouveloy pipe on this end where the machine surfaces, there's going to be a required gap. This gap is critical. This gap is determined and it's on your construction drawing, your installation drawings. Each and every one of these expansion joints will have a different gap potentially. What happens then, you need to know how big this gap is. So you look at your construction drawing, you determine that this is a one inch gap, so you're going to use the one inch gap plus the length of your Nouveloy expansion kit body length, and that's how far back you're going to measure to cut this pipe so you have enough room here to install this. So for example, the Nouveloy expansion kit body I'm using is 15 inches in length. My gap is one inch. So what I did was, after I put the pipe down, I measured from the end of this pipe, I measured back 16 inches, and that's where I cut my pipe on this side. That gave me 16 inches. Once I installed my 15 inch long Nouveau Expansion Kit body, that left me with a one inch gap, which is critical according to the construction drawings. Now, this is only a one inch gap. There's no way I'm going to get my locking flange clamps, my flange clamp, and my lining ring in here once I set this. So prior to installing my Nouveloy expansion body using my Nouveloy to Nouveloy connection kit, I put all these components onto the pipe, slid them out of the way, 
So now when it comes time to put this together, I can just move them into place as necessary. Okay, now that we know why we have a gap and how to get that gap, let's go ahead and get started and put together our Nuvoloy to Nuvoloy expansion kit body. Okay, now that we got our gap determined, which we talked about earlier, how to set your gap, there's something I need to point out to you that's real important. Earlier I mentioned to you UCC form number 720716. In that form, you're going to find a variance for gap setting based upon ambient temperature. When that gap setting is written on the drawings, it's determined that the ambient temperature is going to be around 70 degrees that day. But if you're not 70 degrees, it could be extremely hotter or colder, you need to refer to this UCC form number to find how much you need to change that gap based upon ambient temperature. Now that I know my gap is good, what I'm going to do is the first step is we need to install our first locking flange clamp. But before we do that, I need to take some critical measurements. First, for this 8 inch expansion joint kit, we need to measure back 6 and 3 quarters of an inch onto the pipe and we need to make a mark. Now I'm going to make this mark in several locations down the pipe. Now, what this mark determines is where the back side of my locking flange clamp is going to rest when I get it all nice and tightened down. Two other critical marks we need to make are going to be on the other side. What we're going to measure here is we're going to measure back three inches from the end of the pipe. We're going to make a mark. And we're going to measure six inches back. And we're going to make a mark. And same thing. You need to make this mark in several locations around the pipe to ensure that you're Locking flange clamp and flange clamp are perfectly aligned. Okay, now that I made those marks, I can go ahead, move my components out of the way, and I'm going to set my first locking flange clamp on my Nuvoloy expansion body with the bolts provided. All right, the next step in the installation is we have to install our bolts onto our flange clamp and our locking flange clamp. But these bolts can go in different directions and you have bolts of three different lengths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the longest bolt that I have. The longest bolt I have is going to go into the flange clamp facing away from the machine surface. The next bolt I'm going to install is one of my shortest bolts. There's two of these. I'm going to install that one going towards my machine surface. And then I'm going to take a bolt of medium length. It's going to go away from the machine surface. Another medium length away from the machine surface. And then a third one away from the machine surface. Now, I'm going to take my second of the shortest bolts, and it's going to go towards the machine surface. If you notice, it's 180 degrees off from the other shortest bolt. Once I set that one in, I have two more holes. I have two more bolts of medium length. They're going to go away from the machine surface. Okay, now that all my bolts are in my flange clamp, what I want to do is I want to get them positioned. So I'm going to rotate it so that my first of the shortest bolt is going to go through this hole on the locking flange clamp. I'm going to bring it over. Now remember, there's another one down here, 180 degrees off. Line it up with this corresponding hole. And we're going to set it in place to get it back out of the way. Okay, now that's back out of the way, we need to install our gaskets. 
So I take the first of the white Teflon rope gaskets and I'm going to install it in my flange clamp. Now this has a bevel edge to it. Make sure you put the bevel edge in correctly. I'm going to tuck it all up in there nice and tight. Okay. Now that that gasket's in place, I'm going to take my lining ring and I'm going to slide it on over, locking that gasket in there. Okay. Now that I have that all locked up, I want to rotate this locking flange clamp so that it's on an offset angle from this one, as you can see. This is where my large bolt is going to go, right through there. So this hole right here is going to be empty, no bolt in it. But before I could set that bolt, I have to get my other gasket in place. So I'm going to take my other rope gasket, and I'm going to set it on the pipe. Now remember, this has a bevel to it. It has cut. I want to make sure that bevel cut is at least 90 degrees off from the split in the locking flange clamp. I'm going to bring this up here into place. Again, pay attention to your bevels. All right, now that I got my, uh, both my Teflon rope gaskets in there, I want to make sure that this Teflon rope gasket on this side doesn't get pinched out when I close down on a locking flange clamp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an insert in. This little insert goes right in there on top of the gasket, and that covers that gap right there. Now that I got that covered up, I'm going to go ahead and take my locking flange clamp bolt, and I'm going to set it. And I'm only going to take this hand tight right now. Okay. Now remember earlier we talked about critical measurement. Remember in the beginning of all this, I measured three inches back, and I measured six inches back on this pipe. What I want to make sure is that this locking flange clamp, the back of it is at my three inch mark before I start tightening down all my bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and get it all lined up, make sure it's there, and then I can start installing my nuts and washers. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the nuts and washers on there, and I'm going to start tightening it up. All right, now that we got everything all put together and hand tight, we're going to go ahead and tighten up our cross connection bolts. And then once we get these tightened, we're going to set our torque. But right now, as I'm tightening these cross connect bolts, we want to make sure that our gasket doesn't protrude out the back side of our flange clamp. So I'm going to start tightening these up, and we're going to work in a star pattern to make sure we get them nice and even. And once again, we're going to tighten down in a star pattern. Okay, now that I'm done with the cross connection bolts, I'm going to tighten down my locking flange clamp. I'm going to first I'm going to get it really nice and tight as I can, and then we're going to set the torque. Okay, now that the locking flange clamp is all tightened down, I went ahead and I set the torque on the locking flange clamp bolt. That torque is 500 foot-pounds. So an ordinary torque wrench isn't going to cut it. So I had to use a torque multiplier to get the job done. 
But now that I got it torqued, I have to relieve the stress on this locking flange clamp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the end of the bolt with a mallet. Now I notice it moved a little bit. That means I have to retorque it. So I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, torque wrench out with the multiplier, and I'm gonna reset that torque to 500 foot pounds again. Now that the bolts are all set to 500 pounds, we have to go ahead and set our stop bolt. This stop bolt is supposed to move. This allows for expansion contraction of the expansion joint. The stop bolt will keep this expansion joint pipe from coming completely off the machine surface of the expansion joint body. On this particular installation, where I'm using an eight inch kit, the distance on this is supposed to be five and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from the back of my bolt head to five and a half inches, and I'm gonna set my nut and washer. Okay, now that I'm set at five and a half inches, I want to keep that from moving. So we're going to install the jam nut that's provided with your kit. And using my wrench, I'm going to tighten these two together. There. Now that that's locked, don't forget, you have another one 180 degrees out that also has to be set. Now that the Duvaloy pipe expansion joint connection is properly installed, uh, we need to restore the system and begin a system test. Once normal operating temperatures are restored, we can check and retorque the connections as necessary and monitor the system for leaks. Proper installation of new light pipe expansion joint connection will reduce maintenance costs and costly system downtime. For more information on new light pipe expansion joint connections or other UCC products and parts, please contact your sales representative or visit our website at www.unitedconveyor.com. Thank you for watching.